I have the distinct pleasure of having in my studio someone I know longer than anyone else in the music business, Candido Camaro. I've known him for 50 years. Uh, 50 years ago, I met you in San Juan, Puerto Rico, the um, El San Juan Hotel, and you were working with Jose Fajardo, and I brought to you my, my inventions, the cabasa made out of steel with steel balls and a, a virus lap, and you were very helpful to me and friendly to me and encouraging. You had just come from Japan? I was coming from Japan. I was going to uh, San Thomas, Virgin Island. And you stopped over in Puerto Rico? And you stayed in Puerto Rico, right. And you stayed there six months and, because uh, six Fajardo months asked you with to stay Fajardo, there. Jose Fajardo. What you've done has not been the typical dance music of your country. You've worked in uh, sophisticated environments and different clubs. I know you were there at Birdland in uh, the Monday Night Jam sessions back in 19, the end of the 50s. In the beginning of the 50s. Well, I, I came in at the end of the 50s. Uh -huh. Frank West and Herbie Mann and uh, Chino Pozo oh, and Manuel. Oh, oh. It was a dramatic time. But you have been the, one of the most working musicians I know. You were uh, long affiliated with a sophisticated party band, paid well, uh, other people struggling on the salsa scene for a little money. You always had a good, good paying environment. I feel very lucky and very proud that I have that uh, opportunity to work with uh, all the big names on the jazz field, in the pop field, in the Latin field. Yes, now I just have a, a call from uh, Mr. Tony Bennett. Mm -hmm. So I worked with him for the first time in 1958. And every time he have a chance, he called me to work with him and to go to his house for dinner. And, and you used to, in the early days, carry around a big fat book of Photographs of all the people, luminaries you work with, Sammy Davis Jr., Marlon Brando, uh, Harry Belafonte. Uh, yes. Uh, they were people not in the Latin music scene. They were on the music scene or entertainment. And it was a time that people outside Latin culture loved Latin music. Right, right. I think they, they you get people in... in um, the Palladium Ballroom yeah, of right. all celebrities coming there to yeah, hear the music. Yeah, you have to go there, Marlon Brando, or Sammy Davis, if, uh, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Count Bessie, Duke Arlington, uh, you mentioned everyone. The first time I actually saw you was at uh, Newport Jazz Festival, and you were working with Billy Taylor. That's right, that's and right. Doc. Ed Thigpen was the drummer. Uh-huh. And uh, that really, got me very excited about what you do. And, you know, I like the Latin thing, and Mongo was just coming into his own with a Latin band. Yes. But I always liked the incorporation of the Latin rhythms with jazz. Yeah, that's right. Here you are, 92, and uh, Roberto was just telling me, we just did 15 gigs? Uh, yes. Don't you ever slow down? <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I'll well, let you know. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about some of these gigs. The 4th of July, 1946, I came to the United States with a dance team. The name was Carmen and Rolando. And I sat with two empty cans of condensed milk. I put a skin on, my father put a skin on. That was my first pair of bongos. And I sat, I was four years old. I was banging the table when my mother was serving the lunch. And my father used to say, you're gonna have your hands, that's a skin, that's a wood. And my grandfather used to tell him, let him play there. Someday he's gonna be all over the world, he's gonna be famous. What I'd like to know is, when that time that you first left Cuba, where did the money come from to finance that trip? My father, was, he, was a, uh, he was working in factory, in the factory. So he saved the money? Oh yes, and I, I, and I was playing music when I was uh, 14 years old. I started as a professional. Thank God until now, people still calling me, I'm not gonna say no, so instead God said, okay, that's it. 
Well, I, I was very pleased that Roberto brought you out to the Anaheim NAM show, uh, 2013. It was a lovely experience for you to be there. What can you tell me about some of the, the techniques that you use? Because I, I know that it said you are maybe the creator of multi conga drum playing. Yeah, right, right. And independence. I remember seeing you playing Guido with one hand, the foot pedal, yes, the, the other, the, 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 and, and, and the conga. And the conga and the conga. Are you the first one? And the singing at the same time. All those on the same time. I was doing I'm, I'm already confused. <laughs> but you were, you're the pioneer in that? That's right. I was the first one. I always tried to create something different. What was experiment, it? experiment. Some and artists that you work with, were you first introduced in? And one of the first ones was uh, that, that dance team that I told you before. Mm -hmm. Since then, I started with uh, Machito and uh, Bobby Sanabria. Uh, Marco Rizzo, Chico Farre, all, all the big ones on the Latin field. And uh, I always try to create and do something different and beautiful. Obviously, the world recognizes it because you are an NEA Jazz Master, which is an award given to only a few people and certainly only to those who have accomplished a great deal in their lives. You've touched a lot of people. You. Uh, brought enthusiasm to me as a conga maker, and uh, I always wanted to do things and make things that would make the professionals like you have something in an instrument that's better than they had before. In America, who are some of the people you really enjoyed working with uh, in a percussion sense? You know, in the early days, who were some of the, the greats that you remember? The percussionist uh, Machito using like uh, Jose Manguar, senior, and Carlos Vidal, and then they have uh, Noro, Mor Noro Morales, uh, also conga and bongo player, and Jose Curbelo also have uh, conga and bongo player, Catalino Rolón. Uh, every one of those Latin band, they have uh, uh, one conga and one bongo player. One, one question I have to ask you, can't, I can't help it. It seems now, maybe not for you, but the musicians are not working as much as they used to. Do you see a bright light for the music, Latin music, Latin jazz? Do you think it's, it's dying or do you think it's going to stay alive and grow? That's never going to die because that's the foundation. And, and you can uh, build a house without foundation. So that's gonna stay forever, forever, forever. Maybe, maybe a few changes, but that's the foundation. So that's gonna stay to the end of the war. When there was a higher activity in studios, a lot of singers, American singers, would use a Latin percussionist. Because uh, the feeling, the feeling mm -hmm. is, is very, something catchable and, and, and beautiful, you know. And that's why they're using that on every good music, they're using a conga now. Every time I go to a different country, it's something like for me, so for the first time, so people, they ask me, when you coming back, when you coming back? And that makes me feel good. And always something different and, and new. Recently, have you been traveling overseas? Yes, I was uh, London, I was in Paris, and Germany. And you're 92. <laughs> I'm out of breath thinking about it. <laughs> I never drink since I was born until now. Never drink, never smoke, and never use false inspiration. That's me, no drug. I do remember you sort of bragging about your good record in driving. No moving violations, no tickets. No, no, never, and, never. And Patata was there and he said, my record's better. <laughs> I never drove a car. <laughs> we was a good friend, we was a good friend. Let me ask you, have you met Barack Obama? <laughs> well, you never can tell. Maybe we'll hook it up. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, very happy. Very happy, very proud and lucky and to be here with you 
because uh, this is all, this this day like today that's gone one every every ninety two years. I want to I want to talk about a, a, a recording session that I was in. It might have been nineteen seventy two. And you, it was Mario Bausa's recording. Yes, right. And you were sitting there next to Marcelina Guerra. Uh huh. What were you playing? I was playing the trash that time. And everybody knows you <laughs> as a percussionist. That's it, that's it. But you also play bass. Bass also. You also. play tres. The tres. And, and on that session, that was your I gig. was playing the tres. I had the picture, and you was a photographer. Trance is like a, a Cuban lead guitar, mm -hmm. and who makes that a very, fam a very famous, I very see, popular uh, here in the United States, Asenio Rodriguez. They just mentioned uh, one of the, the street on the Bronx, uh, uh, name, uh, his name. Oh, yeah? Said, yeah, yes, not too long ago. I, I took a photo, my one photograph of Arsenio. But, so you, you're a percussionist, you can play the guitar, play the bass. Uh huh. You can sing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You can uh, sing uh, the song. Uh, yeah, right, right. So you are Mr. Entertainment in the original form. Uh -huh. You do yeah. it all, and you work in every genre. You probably have a few bar mitzvahs under your belt. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> which I, you can't go through life without having some of those. I also like always, always thank my modern father. Because without them... Because without them, no candido. <laughs> I, I am impressed, especially, with your keen memory. I, you know, we talk, and I said, oh, we met in Central Park. He said, no, it was Puerto Rico. I mean, you really... It's just a gift, clean-cut living. Well, I say, I, say, I always say, what is not necessary and not interesting. And I want to thank you because now come to the point, it came to the point everywhere I go all over the United States, only had to take my music. That's mm -hmm. it. Because the three Latin percussion conga drums, they there waiting for me. So I had to thank Martin Cohen for that. Me and Steve Negotian and LP for also, providing right, right, the, the right. back line that's world class. Oh, all the personnel in Latin percussion. You never had any children, did you? I mean? Children. Oh, yes. You oh, do? Yeah. I mean, also grand grandchildren. Oh, also. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Oh, and, yes. And any living here in America? N only one of my grandson. Living in America? Yeah, with me. The rest me. are in Cuba? With me, with me. Yeah, the rest in Cuba, right. I feel very lucky, very proud from my uh, beautiful, intelligent, my right hands, my wife, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Gracias. And one other thing, have you, since that July 4th, uh -huh. ever gone back? No, I, I, last time I was, I was 48, 52, and 55. Those are the years the, that you the, 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 right, right, right. I have not been to your apartment, but how many years have you had that apartment? 47 years. You think it's a permanent address? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look like. <laughs> I think so. Uh, right now, I'm going to run a solo performance by Candido about a year ago with the, the young group Unity, where everybody in the group was about at least no more than a third his age. Woo! So I think we got a pretty good insight into the wonderful Candido Camaro 
and uh, I, I can't tell the audience in congahead.com world how thrilled I am to be with this NEA master and inspiration, a man who I hope to live to be as long as, long, as, long as he is and enjoy life like you do. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much, you. Oh, Thank you, thank you. My pleasure, anytime. A Congahead Production.